1954, Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. The world thought it was impossible, but Bannister, he wasn't even a pro runner. He was a full-time med student, squeezing his training into his lunch break. And if you give me six minutes of your time today, I'm going to break down exactly how he did it, plus also make you fitter than ever with a system that you can repeat also. Here's a little bit of how he did it. So Roger Bannister, obviously he set the world record at the time for the four minute mile at his local school track. All he did was purely simple. During his lunch break, what he did was he would jog the nine minutes to his track as a warm up. Literally got up for lunch, jogged nine minutes to his track. That was his warm up for his main intervals. Then what he did is he ran 10 times 400 meters at his record pace. And if you've ever done a 400 meter, you know this is absolutely brutal. He was hitting them at around a minute or so per interval. Then he was resting two minutes and he did 10 of these. And then what he would do, he'd jog back to class, eat his lunch and, you know, hopefully um, had time to wash up. This beautiful thing about this system is it was simple, it was brutal, and it was also very repeatable and it made him the fastest man on the planet. Now, let's have a look at it a little bit deeper, okay? What Bannister was actually doing was training what was what we now know as his VO2 max, his body, body's ability to take in and use oxygen maximal at maximum intensities. His intervals at race pace, um, these stressed his aerobic ceiling. They basically gave him that much larger, larger capacity to extract more oxygen so that he could perform at a higher and higher and higher level every single time. Now, what also happened here is because he was doing the intervals at that shorter distance, he was conditioning his body to handle that pace and repeat it over and over again. Over time, what this did was that his heart was able to pump more blood and more oxygen and nutrients around the body per beat. His muscles grew more mitochondria, so he got more efficient. His body was able to extract and, and create more energy. Um, and his body also learned to clear lactate faster. All of them added up to um, the physiology of what created Bannister's success. And so how do we apply this today? Okay. First of all, you can run this simple four-step system, okay? First thing we're going to do is you're going to run a baseline 2K or mile time, uh, time trial, and you're just going to record your time. What we want you to take while you're doing this, if possible, is to wear a heart rate monitor and record your max heart rate because when you're running VO2 max intervals, you need to be at or above 80 to 90% of your max heart rate, ideally more in that 90% plus. It's similar to strength training. If you're on this channel for strength training is that, you know, having those higher intensities is going to give you more of that peak output at the very, very top. Obviously, it's quite fatiguing as well. So, if we can get this exactly spot on by measuring your max heart rate during your um, two kilometer or mile time trial, that's going to give us the right zones and right intensities, right pacings to really maximize your VO2 max training. What we also want to take is your two minute heart rate recovery score. Now, the two minute heart rate recovery score is once you've finished your, um, your time trial, Two minutes later, your heart rate is ideally, it should decrease by a certain amount of beats. Let's say it was 180 and it decreases down to 140, okay? So that would be a 40 heart rate recovery score. Good thing about this is that is going to give us an indication of how well your body can get back to a parasympathetic state or a more of a recovered state from those max efforts. Generally, the higher those that score is, um, the faster you're going to recover, and it's a great indication of how fit um, or how well conditioned you are in regards to uh, your conditioning. Um, this basically becomes our dashboard because based on those two um, tools or those two pieces of data, we can then program for you very, very efficiently, and this is something I love to do with my athletes. Um, what we also want to do next is our step two. So based on this, we're going to use the Bannister method or VO2 max intervals, okay? And so from your time trial, you're then going to take your goal pace, okay? And so let's say you did an eight minute 
mile. Okay, you're not gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go and do a four minute mile. Generally, you want to set your target somewhere around 10 to 20% faster. If you're more advanced, it's probably going to be somewhere between, anywhere between 2 to 10% faster, you know. So setting that as, as your goal, um, then all you're going to do is break it down to um, how fast you need to run per 60 seconds. And these are going to become your intervals, okay? So let's say, for example, if you wanted to run a four-minute mile, that would be 60 seconds per, or 60 seconds or less, per 400 meters, okay? What you would do then is you would set that as your interval pace and you'll start your intervals at week one, you're gonna do about four intervals um, at that pace with two times the amount of recovery, okay? Um, so say for example, you did the 60 seconds for the 400 meters, you would rest for two minutes and then go again. Week one starting with four by 400, um, and then you would add one interval every single week um, until you hit 10, okay? That's a seven week block. On the eighth week, you'll actually retest as well. So after that continuous block. This is pure VO2 max training. It's high intensity intervals in zone five, and that's that 90 to 100% of your max heart rates. This is gonna feel hard, okay? If you haven't built the conditioning for this or, or the base level capacity, a little bit more zone two and three work, some more threshold work um, will help you to not essentially hit the wall. If you wanna have a look, there are some other methods that'll bring up your VO2 max. Um, have a look for the, the six minute method I have on this channel. That's something that will get you very fit very quickly and not as brutal as this, okay? Um, then what we have is our other components of our training week. Um, step three to this is having a threshold day, okay? So this is where we want to run double your goal distance at somewhere between 10 to 20% slower than your race pace, okay? This is really depending on how fit you are and, and where your lactate threshold is. This is going to be about a zone to three to four um, on, your, on your heart rate monitor. Um, and what this should sort of feel like is where you are just below the, the lactate threshold. And so what that feels like is if you were to run any faster, you wouldn't be able to hold that pace for too long without lactic starting to accumulate and starting to really burn or you really starting to breathe because that's when you're actually getting into that VO2 max work. We want to be under just under that and we want to sit there, okay? What you'll do is you'll start with two intervals. Um, so say, for example, uh, you are doing a 2K race, okay? You would do four kilometers at that threshold pace. Um, you'd have a good rest and you'd do that twice. Add one rep or one interval every two weeks and aim to increase your pace 1% each week and you'll slowly get faster and faster without absolutely cooking yourself. Um, this raises your lactate threshold and it's letting you run faster before you hit the wall. Step four or part four to this, the ingredients to this is a muscular endurance day. This is where I like to use something like a tempo interval method where you're running at a really easy pace for somewhere between a minute to 90 seconds and then you'll do a 10 second effort at your race pace. Okay, and you'll do intervals of anywhere between 10 to 15 rounds. Generally, this can be a, a, a 10 to um, 15 minute or 20 minute workout. Um, and your goal, once you've hit that race pace for that 10 seconds, is to drop back down nice and slow, generally about a zone, you know, generally, ideally, if you get back to a zone one to two, um, you're absolutely cooking here. And your goal is to bring down your heart rate and your breathing rate as fast as possible. And this will increase your ability, body's ability to recover. Um, and on top of that, we like to do a bit of muscular endurance work as well. This could be high volume band work. This could be repetition method strength work. Um, this could be you know, your isometric concentric work. It's basically anything that's going to improve your local muscular endurance and help to keep your body in one piece, okay? And this is something that we love to program out. Now, all of that is going to give you a very, very good um, aerobic foundation and it's going to give you that peak that will give you an extremely good test on those shorter type intervals. If you have found this useful, um, I want you to understand that Bannister didn't just rely on talent, 
He built the system, okay? We've taken the system, we've modified it, we've adapted it, and it is a, a really good system. We've had some great success on, on two kilometer time trials. Um, and it's, it's just built off simplicity. Simplicity, hard work, um, and being smart with your programming. All of it is designed to raise your VO2 max and make speed repeatable. If you wanna smash your mile or two KPR, um, stop guessing, test, train the zones, build pr and progress the intervals. Simple, brutal, repeatable. That's how you turn the impossible into inevitable. And if this was something that was very useful, please do like and subscribe as I do an endeavor to make more of this style content. Hope it's useful. Get after it.